Good day, everybody. Brian here from quantlabsnet.com. We're going to talk about latest lessons learned about this software architecture for these, well, I'm going to call them now high-speed trading systems. I'll tell you why. All righty. Um, so let me show you. It's a quick set of notes here. Um, so the, this is the output or actually let me just go yeah let, let me just show you the output so we have our server still um capturing all of the data from rhythmic that's still the same server gateway with rhythmic and handling it now with redis valky doesn't matter they're the same one's a fork of another and then here's the client the difference is um difference is is uh instead of building a client for a instrument um, I'm building a client now per strategy. I'm going to tell you why in a sec here. So if I go over to this right here, um, I've talked about uh, in my last stream about what to trade uh, in the futures market and options as well. To be very successful, you have to trade high, like like a lot of liquidity and high volume of of uh, data and trading. And uh, the ones I came up with were the popular ones, like all the market indices, uh, S&P, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold, and silver. Might be some other ones down the line, but that's kind of like what I'm focusing on and oil. So um, out of that, when I uh, applied the uh, data, real world market data again, uh, and did a back test, Four of those strategies, four of them, four of the liquid instruments ended up having one type of strategy, okay? I can't remember which one it was, but uh, out of these four, uh, four instruments were applied to that one strategy, okay? So then I thought to myself, well, why have, just, 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 this is what made me um, pivot towards basing clients on strategies, not clients based upon instruments with unique strategies. So that's what I came up with. And these are the strategies I came up with uh, among the, these eight when I did the uh, analysis. OU mean reversion, MACD momentum, VWAP mean reversion, and RSI mean reversion. This was using a less sophisticated AI model or LLM. Uh, I could apply more uh, quant uh, techniques to, to these models, but it's pretty simple and they seem to work pretty good. So that's what I went with there. So now we have, as I said, we have our server gateway, which is handling the rhythmic API for both market calls and the order information. Then we have our strategy clients built around these strategies. So I have four of these strategy clients and then the server code as well. So um, it's no longer for the clients to be based upon individual instruments. Each client is now built for an individual strategy. And these are the four, first four examples. So they're using four, as I said before, I want to make sure people understand this. So if I take four highly liquid, high volume instruments for the futures market, uh, and the best performing strategies, four of, four of those instruments could be applied to one strategy. So I could run different sessions of the same code or same client, just 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 feeding in uh, the different instruments, exchange, and number of contracts. As a result, there's less coding as well. Now, I want to talk about uh, also the challenges of C++. This is important to know as well. I had to move back and do all of this in C Sharp. I had to move off of C++. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, all this time I've been using with C++ advanced Claude 4.5 Opus, which everyone's talking about now as the, <clears throat> as the uh, high, high mark for now for AI gener code generation and works beautifully. I've known that for a while now, at least six, six months for, for Claude. So as a result, um, when you have code getting to a certain size in C++, along with all the headers, what happens is, is the plot starts to lose context of maintaining 
and debugging. I think this is one of the biggest um, flaws of Claude. Okay, they just actually announced yesterday, last night, that they actually fixed it through the Claude code. So I'm kind of like trying to figure out: Do I use Claude code now more, or do I use VS Code with uh, an AI tool like Roo or um, uh, Windsurf? And I'm asking myself: How much would it cost? Are there caps? Blah 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 blah. So there's that. So these are some of the other big challenges I found with C++. What you need to remember, I'm using Rhythmic Pro, okay? Rhythmic Trader Pro only works on Windows, so I'm stuck on Windows. I can't move all the C++ code to Linux with a WSL or a standalone Linux uh, box, let's say. Um, I have to have the code hosted in the Windows to connect into, uh, into Rhythmic Trader Pro. Now, People say, well, you could connect it via some WebSocket or some HT, uh, uh, TCP IP thing to communicate from the from the uh, WSL back into the Windows host. I don't want to do that. I want to have less coding, less maintenance, for e make it easier for myself. So I'm trying to keep everything all in Windows. So when you do that in Windows with using, uh, let's say, the VS Code, the editor, um, there's probably better C++ tools out there for the package management or the library management. The one that the AI kept pointing to was VCPKG, which is from Microsoft. And I'm going to tell you, it's really horrible to work with. So, for example, if you're working with um, Python, which works great, uh, you load it in with your pip install, the library or the package for Python. And you just code. You just develop your code with uh, your Python editor. Run it on the interpreter, and use your import for whatever package you want. And you don't have to worry about any of that with VC package. It doesn't work like that. You have to tell in the in the configuration file where that VC package is. You have to tell it. It's just it's it's just a complete nightmare to work with. Some people may like it. It's good for them. Uh, you know, working for years with PIP package manager for Python, uh, you can't go back. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there's that. Um, the other thing is with C++, I mentioned earlier, uh, there's too many, too many files to maintain. Like you have the build tools, the configuration files that are in, let's say, VS Code. There's also the CMake file, which can become easily a monster file. You also have the headers, as I said. It just gets too much. And when you're trying to develop that with an AI tool like Claude, uh, it gets too much for Claude. And when you try to go through the debugging, uh, you know, it loses the context. So um, because of that, I have to find another method around it. I, I mean, I know for sure um, Claude, Claude code might be the best tool for me. Just budget, how much am I willing to spend? or one of these VS Code uh, AI extensions like Windsurf or RuCode. Now, I mean, everyone's going to say, why don't you use the Copilot for Microsoft? It's so bad that the uh, stock price of Microsoft itself has been dropping because of this bad AI solution called Copilot. People don't like it. It's inferior. So you go with uh, another tool, as I mentioned. Um, so there's all these challenges with C++. And the question becomes, even if I was to develop C++ on Windows, do I get any benefits from it from a speed point of view? And there might be, especially in how I'm, uh, how I'm creating strategy, uh, developing trading strategies. If I was to call it HFT, to be honest, it's not really HFT, it's HFT-like. That's what I'm going to call it now. And um, to be HFT through the rhythmic, you're going to be using the diamond uh, API, which is very expensive, and you have to have, as I said earlier and hinted in other videos, you have to have a large account, okay? Enough to buy a Ferrari, let's say. On top of that, um, that will give you direct market access. Once you get the direct market access into the CME Aurora data center, um, yeah, you're probably HFT, or you're going to use that as a solution with C++, most likely, or you're going to use 
FPGA or a combination of the both. So I'm not going to go obviously be down that path for quite a long time until I build enough account um, to do that. So everything's still high speed here, which is fine by me. But I just wanted to kind of mention this with some of the challenges. But everything I've done now is in C sharp. So here's the project in VS Code. So here, what I've got, um, let me show you the uh, the uh, coding, not the coding, but the strategy. Oh, sorry, the um, server. So in here, what we have here is the server right here, rhythmic server. Um, and then we have all our logging and all that. It's part of the, um, the uh, rhythmic. With rhythmic right now, because it's Saturday uh, and Monday's a holiday, I can't really test it until Tuesday when, when I get live market data because Monday's a holiday. So it, right now it's a run, in, a, in a very runnable state with the server and the clients. I know and I've tested it with the, um, with the Redis, two-way communication between the, strat the server and each of these strategy uh, clients. So here's the first one. So these are now sub-projects within VS Code, all .NET, C Sharp, console apps. So again, here we have uh, the first one, strategy, MACD, which is an all MACD reversion. Then we have the OU mean reversion, RSI mean reversion. And then this one, we have the VWAP, which is mean reversion. I can't remember, whatever I listed there earlier. We have uh, some uh, code for sharing between the two. And then in there, you'll find the uh, library as well uh, for Redis. So there's that. Okay, so um, just to show you all that. Um, so here's the readme file. Uh, this is my own. Uh, actually, yeah, this is all generated by AI. So what we have here, um, we've got, as I said, the rhythmic server, which is a server code, and then four separate uh, client coding for each strategy, okay? OU, MACD, VWAP, RSI. And then we can open all this because I'm not going to release this to anyone I, I, you know, because I keep saying about uh, the Rhythmic API and you can't talk about it, which is fine by me. Um, so in here, we do all the usual .NET stuff. Um, then we have our configuration files, which is a little easier than C++ for a VS Code. And then we have the the server as well for Redis because it's it's using Redis as the message bus. And as I said earlier in other past videos, it doesn't matter. I'm using Redis 3. I believe it's up to Redis 8, I think. I only need pub sub patterns. So I can use a, an older version of Redis. And I'm fine with it smaller as well. And it's true open source. Um, so that works for me. And that's the message bus between the server and the client strategies as well um so there's all the building on the json build instructions da, 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 da. okay so i just want to show you that um so yeah so there so there is all that um and uh i think it's important to understand the challenges from this and the learning lessons so again C++ and Windows might not be any have any benefit for what I'm trying to do. I've gone full circle with it. I've done demonstration coding with it on Windows. I can kind of get it working. But right now, I'm just going to keep it simple and get it working with C Sharp. I'm okay with that. Because with Rhythmic, you get uh, four API language, programming language options, .NET. Uh, we also got C++. And it can only run on Windows. And the third one is through the web via um, Python, which uses protobuf. And believe me, you don't want to work with that. It's really cryptic. You also can do JavaScript as well. Um, but again, I'm not really comfortable with that. So C Sharp is the easiest way to do that. So I just wanted to uh, go over that, um, what's working. And uh, yeah, so we'll leave it at that as well. And I just wanted to highlight all that, but uh, that's pretty well it. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a good day.